Good evening and welcome to tonight's public webinar where we look at ASX investment opportunities in review for the 16th of October. The information covered this evening is general advice only. I'll break this evening's presentation up into two discussion components. The first will be on portfolio investing where we look at undervalued blue chip stocks to accumulate in your longer term investor portfolio. Then I'll conclude this evening with a look at shorter term trading opportunities largely driven off the back of our new trade table tech technology. The presentation this evening, I'll start with setting the scene from an index trading standpoint, what our short term view is on the S&P 500 and the XJO, and that helps feed into how aggressive we are either on the long or short side uh, of the trading portfolio, but also helps to shape the timing around taking advantage of investment opportunities in the market as well. Uh, if you're joining for the first time, just a reminder, the products and services that we offer are available on the website there. If you'd like to know more about those, please give me a call in the office tomorrow on 1300 614 002. And if you need any guidance in using the technology during your 14 day trial, don't hesitate to contact me and I'm happy to uh, spend some time with you when you're in front of the screen to walk you through the technology. All right, moving straight into a graph of the US market here. Um, the, the Nasdaq's making lower lows, lower highs, and we're still of the view that the growth area of the market's likely to correct. So when we look at that on the S&P 500, we've had the lower low, lower high down there. The market's largely found some level of support on the old resistance there at about 41, 4200 on the S&P, but it does look to be rolling over and likely to retest that support at the moment there. For our local market, the XJO, you can see here I've put in the overhead resistance so it wouldn't get too bullish on the XJO from an index level unless it was able to reverse back up through that 7100 level. When we look at what's gone on the advisory uh, blog over the last seven days, so we, as a subscriber to the Investor Signal Service, important part of it is taking note of what goes on this advisory service. So before I get into tonight's full analysis, I'll just backtrack over some of the commentary that's gone on this over the last seven days. So this is a US specific instrument. It's the Russell Top 200 growth stocks. So it's just one idea of how you would set up short exposure in the US market to take advantage of a correction in the high PE valuation growth names. So it's been bumping along now for the last sort of three months below the 165 resistance, but appears to be sort of gradually breaking down and making lower lows, lower highs. So still a bit cautious on that. And we saw that reflected even in some of the tech stocks today where you know, we have one to 2% uh, on um, sell offs in some of the growth tech stocks on the ASX today. So still sitting on the short side of that growth theme, the XJO market index just highlighting the overhead resistance there that we looked at earlier. On the buy side, gold, you want to be long Northern Star, that's our preferred gold exposure along with gold road resources. In the energy complex, you want to be long Santos as one of our preferred plays there. Oil just highlighting there the rally that we've seen from sort of $70 back up towards 90 Gold, this is looking at it from a longer term five year graph. We can see that gold after the correction from um, 2000 down to sort of 1850 we've now rallied back up to 1940 uh, the trade table so we had some strong performers there in the trade table I'll finish this evening with a review of the ASX 100 trade table so just highlighting some of the activity there so this is something that is certainly worth um, stopping and having to think about if you don't yet have exposure to the S&P biotech ETF uh, I recommend that you make a note of this on your notepad the stock code for it is cure uh, and have a look at it down here at around $38 it offers value um, you know yes it's subject to fairly high levels of volatility but I think you're looking at a sufficiently discounted price where you could really entertain starting to accumulate a position in this ETF for your longer term investor portfolio so again down here at around $38 start having to think about building a small position size in that clean away. Uh, my commentary here really is that um, the stock was always a little expensive and with interest rates where they are buying a stock on a two two and a half percent dividend yield with sort of only five or eight percent earnings growth. <coughs> 
is kind of fair value at the best and and that's the way that I would view clean away but the correction that we've had down from 325 down to 230 it's certainly in a range now where you could start to look to accumulate this stock it's a good safe uh, allocation for your portfolios and over the next 12 to 24 months we will see a recovery in that as interest rate yields start to come back down again uh, AZJ, have a think about adding that one into your portfolio. See value there at around that 340 level. The stock has since rallied. We'll have a closer look at that this evening as I move through the charts. The S&P Biotech uh, clean away. And there we are back to last week's webinar. So what I want to do to kick things off this evening is I'm just going to go back a little bit further and go through what's gone on the advisory blog over the last 30 days and just share with you the analysis there. So this iBuy is a reasonably new listed ETF on the AS specializes in online retail and e-commerce you can see here where I've created a band where we're looking to buy this at a lower level so we're hoping these growth stocks in the US have another sort of leg lower and you'd look to accumulate this at around that 945 so again make a note on your notepad I buy and the accumulation range there's around 945 <clears throat> Northern Star is our preferred gold exposure. It's switched from sell conditions there into buy support at around $10. And if you're looking for gold exposure, that along with GDX here, this is an ETF that gives you a basket or portfolio exposure to gold miners. It's rallied now about 10, 12% since finding support there at $40. ResMed, this is oversold down here at $22. If you don't own it in your portfolio, you want to start building a position there in that one. And we're not doing too much in Whitehaven, but just highlighting that it shifted from sell conditions there into algorithm buy and the support there at around $6. Amcor, deep discount now starting to uh, emerge here. The correction from 19 down to 18.90. Um, stock trading on back up towards a 4.5-5% dividend yield. Uh, it's attractive here. We know that the earnings have come down um, you know, in, it, um, into essentially negative growth numbers over the last 12 months, but we think most of that's now factored into the share price. You're buying the stock back at levels that we last saw sort of in 2018, even sort of 2017. Uh, Amcor's expanded and grown revenue since then. Uh, back at a PE between 18 and 20 times earnings on 4.5-5% dividend yield. You're in a safe zone there to start looking at accumulating Amcor. The Cure ETF, so this is the one we were looking at a moment ago there, the correction here from 80 down to 37, are looking for it to find an inflection point, and you want to be starting to accumulate this. When interest rates do start to ease back a little, I think this will probably even move ahead of time. I think this is an area of the market that's been sold off uh, heavily in, in sort of the... Um, shift away from growth and low yield. Um, so cure, uh, take a look at that, look to accumulate around that $37, $38 level there. Santos, this is a uh, our preferred energy exposure at the moment, Santos and Woodside predominantly, but Santos uh, offers more growth than Woodside. Uh, so look at being a buyer of Santos. If we just move in and have a closer look at this, so support down here at 725 and you kind of got the first test first fail, so just the higher level of support there around 750 that you want to be a buyer of Santos at or near these levels. Coles is correct from 20 down to 1550. Um, Stock's now pushing up towards a 4% dividend yield, about 18 times earnings. Uh, you, I don't expect it to rally back and make a new high anytime soon, but it is supported by a reasonable dividend yield and likely to trade back up towards that $17 level there. iTech, this is a way if you're trying to diversify your portfolio and look at adding growth, uh, this is one way of doing it. Again, wouldn't have large position sizes in some of these growth themes just yet uh, but these are the names that you want to start having to think about um, as as the correction continues in that growth area of the market. AZJ switch from sell conditions there in an algorithm buy uh, we've been accumulating that at around 340 for portfolios. Clean away so just have a closer look at this one again the correction here from 330 down to 240 so you want to be looking to accumulate the stock anywhere between sort of this sort of 
roughly around 225, 230 level. Uh, Lend lease is switched from sell conditions into buy. This is a high risk in so far as it's um, you know, counter cyclical. Property stocks are really out of favour at the moment, but Lend lease is managing gearing very well. Um, I don't. The gearing hasn't is running around 18%, which is still low in the current environment. Um, you know they are selling off some assets and and keeping and ensuring that those gearing levels are kept in check. Um, but watch this one closely. We're getting down to a level where we're looking for an inflection point there in lend lease and a new uptrend to begin there. CSL, so you want to be a buyer of this, the correction from 320 down to 230. Uh, keep the position size you know, reasonably small, but be prepared to sort of build this up in size. You know, I think somewhere between 210 to 240, you want to really have sort of your full uh, position allocated into CSL. I don't think the downside sell-off goes too much deeper than that. Uh, again, this is a fairly new ETF that's listed on the ASX wire. This is the global copper miners. Uh, start to have a think about accumulating that in your investor portfolio. Uh, trans, Transurban, not doing too much here at the moment, but just highlighting that shifter from sell conditions into buy. Support down there at around $12. The global banks... Um, we've been trading in and out of that, not doing too much there at the moment. We've seen JP Morgan come through, deliver their results. Mostly the results were fine, but you might have noticed in the US market, a lot of the banks started out fairly strong in Friday night, closed on the session lows. We've got some of the other big banks reporting this week in the US, so we'll get a bit more of a sense of... Uh, but what that tells me is the market kind of has a bit of a view that's about as the best it gets at the moment for US banks with them closing on the session lows. So I don't know that it sets up a super strong picture at the moment to bother adding too much exposure into this global banks ETF. Um, and likewise for the domestic market, even our local banks, it's hard to get too excited about the opportunities there at the moment. Uh, cloud computing ETF, this is a growth area. And if we do get a little bit of a correction in those growth names, again, this would be an ETF that I'd guide you towards. SLF, if you want exposure to ASX property REITs, um, Look at this, the SLF. I think again, it's a little bit counter cyclical. We've seen the correction here from 15 down to $10, so roughly 50% correction in this name. Uh, almost back at uh, lows that we last saw during the pandemic. Um, hard to kind of pick the, the final turning point here, but I think just on a straight valuation basis, you're at a level where you want to start building a position in that for your investor portfolio. IGO not doing too much there. The correction here in lottery court, so from 525 down to 450, start thinking about accumulating a small amount of that one for your portfolio. The ASX, um, if you've um, sort of joining the recordings for the first time, the view here on the ASX is we know that there's not much in the way as top line revenue growth at the moment. Uh, stock's trading about a 4% dividend yield about 20 times earnings um, the correction back down here to $55 brings it back into sort of levels that we're probably trading at you know in 2017 2018 um, the issue that the market's grappling with is that uh, you know the slowdown in in revenue growth and the increase in capital expenditure. So it's one for the patient investor. I don't think that there's a catalyst there to suddenly drive this too much higher tomorrow, but uh, you're getting paid a good dividend yield with a franking credit, uh, a fully frank dividend. Uh, so you know, down here at around $55, there's room to start adding this into your portfolio. The downside risks are relatively low there. Uh, I pay this a pretty aggressive uh, uh, payment. So this is a portfolio approach to uh, predominantly US payment companies. So it's got you know, Master, Visa, American Express, PayPal, um, uh, Block. Uh, so it's a portfolio approach, some interesting uh, businesses there. It is an area that's likely to deliver growth. Again, you can see there I've created a bandwidth between 8 and sort of 8.55. It's a fairly new listed ETF, but it's one that I'd guide you to if you're looking to pad your portfolio with some of these growth opportunities at the right price. Uh, here's another one, which is Robo, your global uh, robotics and automation ETF. 
if we sit, and I'm not looking for like a major crash in this area of the market. I think you know there's sufficient growth in these areas. It's written, you know, that it is real the growth coming through from AI and automation. Uh, these businesses give you exposure to that theme. What I'm thinking at the moment is there may be sort of five percent downside in some of these names, and then you'd want to be willing to uh, start building up the accumulation of the position in your portfolio. So in the case of Robo, to be specific, there I've got 64 as support, 68. Sorry, 64 is sort of the bottom end of the band with 68 there as the sort of top and be looking to accumulate it sort of in the midpoint, which would be about $65, $66 there. Qantas, the correction here from 7, so getting down to that level there, we want to take a look at that between 450 and 490. Blue Scope Steel. So I've been a little bit cautious on this, but it's a high quality business. Um, generally, the the uh, building product providers, we've been avoiding those for the moment. Probably Blue Scope is the exception though. So being a buyer of this are around that 1750, so I'd definitely make a note of that one. Uh, Altium uh, in in the tech space there, we've had a good position running there, as is with Elkham. Fletcher Building, we've avoided that, and there we go into Treasury. So that was a big, just a recapping what's gone on the advisory service uh, what I'd like to do now is just move through the top 50 stocks tonight so what I've done here is gone into the model investor portfolio and we're just going to get the least number of days to the top and I'm just going to go through the stocks that have been added to the top 50 portfolio and share some commentary with you on these and I'll roll in a fair bit of data so we're looking at it more from an investor standpoint from rather than trading and then it the end of tonight's recording. I'll come back and show you this new technology which we've released here, which is the trade table, which is for shorter term trading over sort of seven to 45 days. But um, the next section will be the ASX top 50 model portfolio. And I'll explain a little bit about the drivers behind adding these in. So Cockley has been added in following the switch from sell conditions there into buy. In the case of Woodside, it's been added following the switch from sell there into buy, so it's a fairly new uh, addition. James Hardy's gone from sell into buy. Uh, in the case of Transurban, we looked at that one earlier, from sell conditions into buy. Uh, zero, as I mentioned, uh, this is you know, the sell-off that we had not only today, but in Friday, this is all part of that theme where the sort of growth stocks are correcting uh, under a bit of selling pressure but ultimately our expectation is that the switch from sell conditions there into buy holds and we got support level there at about 105 for zero. Suncorp switch from sell there into algorithm buy and support there around 1275. And Aristocrat from sell conditions there into algorithm buy. Aristocrat's a really high quality business and uh, it should be a holding in your longer term investor portfolio. Uh, Qantas, uh, correction down here to 450, start you know adding that one to your watch list. ResMed down here at around 22, you want to be looking at that. Uh, Stockland's not doing too much here in these property names, so again, the preference would be the SLF. Uh, if you're looking for exposure to property. Uh, Blue Scope, um, add this one to your watch list. You want to be looking at this down on this sell-off down here. So as it pulls back to around that 1730, uh, start to have a look at adding that one. Wes Farmers, high quality business, multi-year growth story here. And uh, whilst it might not do too much over the next six months or 12 months, uh, likely to mainly bump sideways. I think the, the view short term, uh, but longer term, really high quality business and should make up a fairly large part of your investor portfolio. Fortescue Metals, preference BHP, Rio and Fortescue all in the portfolio. Iron ore's holding up pretty well. Uh, so comfortable with looking at Fortescue above $20. Uh, Rio, uh, we hold this in our portfolio. So the switch there from sell conditions into algorithm buy. Uh, Lottery Corp, so uh, make a note of this one, the correction from 5 down here to 450, start accumulating that. Mervac, again, not doing too much in this space, the preference is just to simplify it and look at the SLF. Uh, GPT, again, we're not 
taking exposure too much on these individual stocks and just simply looking at the SLF. Uh, Macquarie Group are keeping the banking exposure relatively small at the moment. We just don't see the catalyst to you know, get too excited. So sort of that um, upside return versus downside risk at the moment across you know, the banking sector. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there is room. We do hold Macquarie in our portfolio, but you know, we generally don't have much exposure to the Australian uh, major four banks, ANZ, is our preference for where we do so we do have some exposure to A and Z but you know from total portfolio position sizing the sector allocations relatively small uh, BHP we like this so we remain exposed to BHP support there at around $40 so the switch there from sell conditions into algorithm buy Commonwealth Bank um, again don't get excited about the opportunities here uh, don't see too much on the upside and we still think there's some risks there to the downside uh, ANZ remains our preferred banking pick uh, but again the catalyst is not really there you know to, to drive a whole lot on the upside Insurance Australia Group so recognizing the switch there from sell conditions into algorithm buy and then another subsequent signal here at around 530 and looks to be setting up for a decent higher low there and a rally higher from that 530 level. Brambles is a little mature this move. It's already switched from there from sell conditions in algorithm buy. It's rallied from $11 up to $14. I think it's likely to consolidate now. CSL, so this is a great example of where you want to look at accumulating this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and ultimately CSL should be sort of building up to around you know, five to maybe eight percent of your total portfolio size as a guide there. ASX is another name where I think you can have that position size sitting at around that five to eight percent. Um, you know, so start accumulating around that fifty-five dollar level. Santos, so we like this. This is our preferred energy uh, exposure there from switch from sell conditions into algorithm buy. It's largely been bumping sideways for the last sort of six or eight months, but you know now we have this fairly strong higher low formation in place there around that 720 730 level amcor deep value there start to accumulate that again you should be comfortable building that up to sort of a five to eight percent of your portfolio position sizing coals there's value starting to build there at around 15 dollars so we like that northern stars our preferred gold exposure and clearly there's momentum bullish momentum in gold at the moment so you want to have some exposure there uh, origin uh, benefiting from the takeover deal there. Telstra, room to add that in your portfolio at around 380. And there we are, back to Cochlear. So what we're looking at there is the automated algorithm portfolio where the algo engine's picking which stocks out of the top 50 should be in your portfolio. And if we have a look at the performance of those, there's a few there that you're picking up on the you know, on the discounted side of the signals and then there's others here that have done extremely well with Origin, Brambles, Insurance Australia etc. So if you're looking to build an investor portfolio hopefully the guidance there gives you some idea as, a, as to our preferred allocations. What I'm now going to do is jump into trading. We're going to talk about the market uh, a bit more under a microscope so looking at it across the next I was looking at trading opportunities across a five to uh, or seven to 45 day period so this again is an automated process driven off the back of our algorithm engine um, here's the positions that are in the portfolio at the moment uh, the difference here is we're running fairly tight stop losses so part of the focus tonight will just be to toggle through these and just remind you about the stop loss strategy and where that sits so when doing this I'm going to zoom in and have a closer look at it as I mentioned a bit more under a microscope so the technical pattern that we're looking here for here is the algorithm buy signal with the green arrow and then the price action above the moving average so if we have a look at this we, what we're really doing is capturing momentum starting to accelerate but at the first point where that momentum fails the algorithm is going to get us out or at least have a stop loss below the pivot low but prior to the entry point so if we have a look at IAG as an example we can see here it's been in the portfolio for four days and the stop loss is at five dollars forty so if we jump back into the chart so it's entered the position just there 
and the stop loss goes back below that low there which as if you cast your eyes up to the top of the screen there you can see that's $5.40 low so that becomes the trade and what the algorithm engine will do here is it will stick with this trade for as long as the momentum continues um, so whether that ends up being five days or 45 days it's going to stick with that trade and capture the upside momentum so in the case of Elkham so we've seen this uh, shift to into the trade table stop loss will be below here so if we see this weakness continue uh, we'll, we'll see that stopped out uh, down or EDI slightly above the stop loss there Mervac group again uh, getting back down sort of testing uh, the lower range there but still above the stop loss likewise Transurban AGL so this is setting up and looking quite reasonable so buy signal the green arrow price action above the moving average stop loss goes back below that low there uh, Lendlease uh, holding above the stop loss there uh, Woodside the momentum is pretty strong here so we've had this move above the moving average and, and that's an open trade we can see the stochastic trending higher I'll come back and just review these stop losses James Hardy so buy conditions green arrow move above the moving average so that drops into the trade table Santos uh, buy condition green arrow above the moving average so looking for that momentum to accelerate again over the coming days car sales buy signal cross above the moving average that's in the trade table uh, horizon under buy conditions the green arrow cross above the moving average so we see that sit in the trade table and there we are back to insurance australia groups so if we have a look at what this means for the performance of it uh, this if you scroll down you can see all your win loss ratios here uh, and then the return so this simulates a million dollars invested into the portfolio uh, so at the peak the portfolio is up around 17 percent we've given a little bit of that back uh, it was only sort of a few months ago we we're back up at 16.7 we've seen a little bit of correction in line with the market moving lower and we're still up 11 percent for the year now the benefit of this strategy is it's fully automated and if the momentum in the market really turns down we're back into a hundred percent cash which will protect the position uh, during times of weakness um, so the new trade table technology you can either follow it and manually put the orders on uh, I'll go through these and pick out which ones uh, you prefer the setup on or we actually have a uh, completely automated managed portfolio uh, where you can allocate money to it and, uh, and, and, and the trades are fully automated so again if you'd like to know more about uh, our products or services have a chat with me on the technology or the automated um, strategy around the trade table please give me a call on 1300 614 002 and uh, please enjoy your free trial and I look forward to continue to update you on uh, the main investment themes that we're focusing on via the advisory service.